Chip of the day. Everybody likes chip of the day. So the chip of the day is a 74 LVQ02. So it's a 7402, but in the uh, TTL family of TVQ, which I have no idea what that is. Um, it says low voltage. Uh, so let's take a look at the data sheet. It looks just like a uh, a quad NOR gate. Uh, so quad 2 input NOR gate. Let's read what it's fame, claimed fame is. Ideal for low power, low noise, 3.3 volt applications. Guaranteed simultaneous switching noise level and dynamic threshold. So it's low power, low noise. Yeah, the switching, switching can get spikes into the power supplies. And if it's a real low power battery power thing you don't want a bunch of stuff going around guaranteed skew guaranteed incident wave switching into 75 ohms that's kind of an interesting number all right uh let's see what else the data sheet has to say all right recommended operating conditions so vcc is two volts to 3.6 wow two volts um, input voltage is the same, and output voltage is the same. Nice temperature range. All right. Uh, let's see here. Minimum. So there are the things. What else can we get off this data sheet? Currents are microamps. Yeah, okay. So it's a really, really low currenty thing. Uh, propagation delay, 6 nanoseconds, 5 nanoseconds, all right. Skew. All right, let's take input capacitance for puff. Uh, what is this output drive capability? Um, IOH. I-O output current. Oh, it's pretty healthy. Okay, wow. 36 and uh, 25 milliamps, so... Yeah, it sinks uh, 36 and it sources 25. So there you go. So that's pretty good. All right. Minimum quiescent, 20 microamps. Nice. Okay. Uh, well, let's um, let's hook one up. Um, the reason I have these is I was at Anchor Electronics and sometimes they have grab bags, and I got a grab bag for a buck. So these are all a do different types of dollars. So I, I bought several things that were a buck. So um, this is a 74 LVQ02. Got a bunch of them. They're surface mount packages. They're uh, SO14s. Um, so I had to use a little adapter card, which I have. Um, so I have a 555, which should run at 3 volts. Uh, so I'll run this whole thing at 3.3 volts. And 555 is kind of squeaking by about that point. But I think it'll be all right. Um, I did. Uh, put a bypass capacitor on the chip. It's underneath this here. It's on the breadboard. It goes from pin uh, 14 to 7. It's underneath the part of uh, 0 0.01 uh, microfarad capacitor, and I have a bypassing across the uh, 555 because I want to have low current, low power, right? Uh, low noise. So I have that going. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the 555 into... A, uh, into uh, okay, I'm going to call this the 555, right? And I'm going to run the 555 into uh, pin 3 and pin 2. I'm going to short these together. So I'm going to I'm going to run it into here and we'll invert it. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to go down here and tie these together. I'm going to take this one and bring it around, tie these guys. Take this one and tie it these guys, and then we'll look at the out. Okay? So we'll have the 5-5 five five guide going into this one, and then it goes into that one, then it goes into that one, then it goes into that one. Each time it gets inverted, and we'll take a look at the output. All right. Uh, let's take a look to see if it's doing its thing, and there we go. Looks like the output is very, very clean. Nice sharp edges. Let's take a look at one of those edges. Oh yeah, look at that. Very, very sharp. Where are we here? 50 nanoseconds, 20, 10, 5 nanoseconds. 
So it's about two and a half nanosecond uh, rise times, or fall time in this case. Uh, let's see here. Let's go ahead and trigger up here somewhere. There we go. Okay, let's uh, move. Let's move down the ground so we can see what's going on here. There we go. There we go. Nice. We can measure the rise time. So let's do that. Measure, add, uh, rise time. Uh, let's turn the indicators on. And, oh, okay. I'm going to close that one. There we go. So we're getting, uh, we're getting about two point. It's rattling around a bit, but it's around 2.7 nanoseconds, something like that. All right, so um, let's see. The first thing I want to show is, let's go back out again. We have some ringing there. Let's go back out again, out again and get a nice, nice clean signal here. Let me show you what it does to the 555 timer, okay? Let me bring in... Uh, channel 2 and we'll take a look at the uh, take a look at the 555 all right so there's the 555 and you can see the 555 is kind of roundy and uh, then it uh, let's put its ground in the same place all right so they're both ground reference the same now what's pretty amazing is the voltage level that the 555 first fires at. It's only about two volts. And this guy sees it. So on the data sheet, a valid low, uh, VIL valid low is 0.8, minimum high is two, yeah. Okay, so we want a valid high is two volts. Typically one and a half. So, so typically this thing will fire a one and a half volt high and a 0.8 volt low. So very, very small. So this is right at two volts. So it's guaranteed at two, but it usually comes in at one and a half. So that's why it's working so well. And we can look at the prop delay here between it seeing its edge and it's firing. It's about uh, 15 nanoseconds or something like that. All right. Uh, now, what I want to show is that we're making a mistake, okay? We're making a big mistake. These are pretty fast rise edges, right? And so you have to worry about grounding of your scope probe. I've gone over this before, but we'll, this is a great part to illustrate it on. We'll take, our, uh, we'll take our scope probe, which has a regular ground wire on it, okay? I'm going to take that ground wire off. And I'm going to take the probe tip off. Then I'm going to use one of these little spring doohickeys. You put it over the probe and then you kind of wind it on clockwise and it'll go on. And now you have this little springy thing here. And uh, it uh, will put ground on that little springy thing and then we'll put our signal over there. Okay. So I have ground right here on the board and I can go up here to the uh, to the signal and now we don't have the bouncies a little bit we probably could even get rid of those if we had an infinitely short uh, infinitely short ground the perfect perfect grounding and everything but you see that uh, yeah that big ringing and all those other things were just an artifact of our poor ground on our scope probe so when you look at fast signals it's very very important to do this uh, to, the, to do this local grounding. Okay, so I have the little spring thing here. Little spring things going into a hole. I have ground on the on the rail here. So the ground is grabbing that breadboard ground and then my probe is touching this uh, header here which has the signal on it. All right, and we get a very, very nice looking signal. Okay. So if you want to be looking at the rise time and everything, you have to do it this way. But this is a pain in the butt to always do all the time. So as long as you know that's happening and you're satisfied with that, then you can kind of go back to your other ground. We'll do the clip on again and go from here. Oops, and then we'll go back. And then you can just go to this and you know that this is artificial, okay? 
Now we might care about other things, okay? Mm -hmm. We just might care about is the frequency right and everything like that, and we don't worry about this little zip. You can actually see it here. It goes way up there, uh, that little ringing on there, but that's not real, okay? What we could look at is uh, uh, the timing of this thing, okay? And so instead of pin uh, channel 2 there, let's take a look at channel 2 here. And, oops. Okay, now what we're looking at now is this is the input to the, to the gate and that's the output. We're looking at the very last gate. This is the output and that's the input though. And it's inverting, right? And we want to compare what the delay is, okay? A good trick, um, I might not have shown this before, a good trick is to go to your channel 2 and invert it, okay? And then you need to maybe move its ground reference up so they kind of match again, okay? So now uh, you can kind of see that there's a delay there, all right? And that's really what you're interested in is how big is that, how big is that delay? And uh, let me turn this measurement on. Oh, I should also have told you that when we used the good little short ground, the rise time got much, much better, okay? It was much, much sharper. It went down to about 2.1 nano, uh, nanoseconds. I've measured it before, about 2.1. It's about 2.7 now, went to 2.1. So having that ground in there is very, very important. Okay, but now we just kind of look, want to look at relative things. Let me turn the measurement thing off, remove that. There we go. So uh, we could use markers and everything, but we really don't need it. Uh, here's five nanoseconds per division, and so we're probably at around three nano, three nanoseconds uh, delay on this thing. Um, but let's take a look at the gate before that, okay? Uh, one trick we can do is use our, re uh, our reference. We're going to be referencing ground two. We're going to save to reference, okay? And now uh, it's going to remember where that was. And then let's go down one more, one more gate. Uh, let's see, that was that one we looked at. Now let's take a look at this one. Yeah, let's take a look at this one. And uh, it doesn't need to be inverted, so I'll turn off the inversion on that, on that, uh, on that gate. And now we can kind of look at a family, right? Here's one gate, here's the output of that gate, which is the input of this gate, right? So you can sort of see, yeah, the uh, delays are not all equal inside of, uh, inside these things. Uh, the, this gate's a little bit faster than that gate, uh, but not by much. And again, all that waviness is fictitious. It's not there. You need to have good grounds when you do these measurements. All right, that was the tip of the day, a 74LVQ02. Um, shout out down below if you've used one of these and uh, why you used it. And, uh, you know, that'd be interesting. Something new to me.